This video is part of our Traveling in the USA. We took an Amtrak train from Tampa, Florida to New York City. Hi. So we decided to do a little video on our recent Amtrak trip from hell. <laughs> we were looking so forward to this trip from Tampa to New York City. And, you know, you know when you take trains, you're not doing it for cost and you're not doing it for time because you can get cheaper airfares and the air, air time is like two and a half hours as opposed to 25 hours. Yeah. Uh, you're doing it, it's kind of a, we were thinking, a romantic trip, <laughs> uh, something we hadn't done in America. We've taken trains in, in Europe and they're wonderful. Uh, so we, we um, emerged onto this trip and it started out well in tampa the train was on time coming in we got in we got our coach seats we did not take a sleeper because we said one night overnight you know we can we can do that well things escalated and it told us uh we, we realized that um, trains are very vulnerable because of their track set up. You know, it's not fenced in, the tracks are not fenced. And so we had several um, mishaps, I guess. Yeah, the, I mean, the first one, we didn't even know it happened. Um, it felt like the um, engineer had just put heavy brakes on and uh, the train came to a stop. We had no idea, nobody was talking. Uh, next thing we knew, there were probably about 10 police cars with lights on all around the train. Yeah. So we figured something happened on board, and they were coming on board. Uh, but it wasn't. Uh, we actually ended up hitting a Mercedes and completely destroying it. And that took several hours um, to clear the car, check the tracks to make sure they're okay, um, do the police work, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we were on our way. Well, uh, we were on our way. Uh, but I should tell you, we should tell you that no one was hurt because the people yeah. that were in the car, we don't know if the car stalled. We, we never did get any information. But uh, the people ran away uh, from the car so that no one was hurt, which was important because that really would have been a very sad thing. But... Um, so what happened next was we were on our way again after five hours, as jo uh, George said, you know, that everything got cleared up. And then after about a half hour, we stopped again because what happened was the cow catcher in front of the engine <laughs> um, got broken by the collision with the car. And so, uh, so part of the cow catcher was dragging on the rails. Okay, so here we go. So that was another, I and, think that might have been five hours that we the, had to wait. Well, this required bringing in someone that knew what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, with a, a welder and, and cutting uh, equipment because yeah. they had to cut the cow catcher. Yeah. And make sure it wasn't scraping onto the rails and destroying the rails and causing sparks. Yeah. Uh, and that got done, and then we got up to Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Virginia, and we had heard that there was a major snowstorm uh, coming through the Washington, D.C. area, so it would hit Richmond and north of Richmond. And once again, there's a station there, and there's snow on the ground, but not deep, nothing, nothing serious. And we come to a stop, and no word. We have no idea what's going on. <laughs> After about an hour or two, they did get on and tell us that there were 300 trees Jeez. down. On the tracks. And there were crews working on it, but it was going to take time. They had to cut the trees, remove them from the tracks. Then they had to have some kind of vehicle run up and down and inspect the tracks to make sure that they were safe. And this yeah. took, what, about 15 hours? Something like that. I don't think we left Richmond till like 9 or 10 in the morning, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. And we were getting nervous because we, you know, we were supposed to get in uh, t uh, Monday night. Um, 
the scheduled time was 7 o'clock. When we left Tampa, they said, oh, we're going to be early. It's going to be 6 o'clock. Uh, we didn't get in until Wednesday at 3 a.m. Yeah. So we had missed the first night. So we figured, you know, the hotel was going to, you know, charge us for that because we were no-shows. But we were texting them and telling them what was going on. Then we, the second night, we were worried that they would just cancel the reservation and, you know, we wouldn't have a room. And here we are, 3 a.m. in New York and no place to sleep. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that brings us to another point, which is that even with all this mess that we encountered, um, the crew were, were great. They were really nice. They um, brought in uh, food and, um, you know, gave it to people free. They, they had hamburgers and pizzas. And, and, you know, one wonderful thing is that the passengers were really nice too. Um, nobody went crazy and started screaming or everybody just wanted to know what was going on. And that sort of reaffirmed my faith in humanity <laughs> because it was quite a chore getting through this trip and people stayed calm. Yeah, we, we blame Amtrak management. Um, now, you know, all these things were acts of God. They couldn't have prevented an accident. They couldn't have prevented the storm that knocked 300 trees down and all, all these things that happened to us. Oh, and the final one was the engineer and the conductor timed out. They couldn't dr they couldn't drive the train any longer. Right. Just like in the airlines, you only can go for so long. So we lost them, and we had to wait for a crew to be brought in through these snowy streets, which were impossible. That took hours. Yeah, it did. Um, but I think what I blame the management for is we did run out of water. The crew did go and find it somewhere. As Rory said, they got hamburgers. They went to a, a McDonald's. I mean, the manager at McDonald's must have been saying, oh, my God, what a night. Because they, they had to have ordered a thousand hamburgers. You know, this was a big train. And uh, we had a cafe. So, Coach, you can't use the dining room. Only the, um, uh, the people in the rooms can have, use the dining room on the East Coast. On the long distance West Coast ones, uh, both coach and the rooms can use the dining room. Uh, so we were not allowed in the dining rooms. Um, there was a cafe car, so in the morning we were able to get coffee. Um, we're vegetarian. They, even though their menu says they have things like impossible burgers and, you know, um, they didn't really cater to people with dietary needs. Um, we had to take a, uh, basically, a Mc egg McMuffin and take the meat off, you know, and then have it with just egg and cheese. Um, but, they, you know, they ran out of food, they ran out of water. That really shouldn't have happened, but it was, was a long time. I mean, you know, we were, we took 58 hours instead of 25 so more than double the time. And sitting in a seat for 58 hours, let me tell you, your butt hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but we got into New York. We were supposed to spend three days in New York. We only got to spend two because we lost one. Uh, but we had a wonderful time in New York and yes. we loved it. Yes. Uh, our, our trip home, which we show on the video as well, uh, to Tampa, there was uh, no problems. We arrived maybe a half hour late, but that's that's basically on yeah. time for trains. Yeah. And uh, so we, we just wanted to let everybody know that when you schedule these long distance trips, an overnight trip um, on the trains, be aware, especially if you're going through snow country and things that can stop the train. Um, your delay may not be a couple of hours, like the literature says. We were like 30-some hours delayed. delayed. Yeah. So just a couple of little tips. As George said, you know, don't count on being anywhere near on time. Don't, I mean, don't schedule anything that has to be done when you get there at a certain time. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we had brought plenty of snacks and drinks and water, so we were fine. So that'd be a good idea for you to do too. And you never know if the train is gonna be hot or cold. 
Um, this particular train was comfortable, but of course at night it got chilly and we had to use a blanket. And we brought these wonderful camping pillows that you can just blow up and then deflate when you're ready to, you know, wake up. And the, the last thing I can think of, George, is the uh, power strip you should bring for them. Yeah, there's, there's one plug per seat. So, you know, you have two seats next to each other in coach. There were two plugs. Um, that's not enough. You know, I have a, a watch to charge, a phone to charge, an iPad to charge. Rory has a phone to charge. Um, we brought a USB strip that allows you to plug, uh, I think, up to eight USB devices into one plug. You should have that. Or a normal power strip where you can plug in multiple devices, but don't count on being able to plug everything in directly on the train. And I brought a uh, wireless charger. <laughs> and that does not work because when you put the phone on it, the train moves so much that it, 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 it cuts into the charging. So, so bring plugs, bring cords. Um, unless you have a MagSafe. You know, MagSafe are those wireless chargers that have the magnet, because uh, I had that on the train, and, and it won't slide off. The magnets are strong. But if you have a normal one where your phone is basically just sitting on um, the wireless charger, yeah. it won't be sitting there after no, a while. No, after a few seconds, so. All right, so enjoy our video. Yeah. COVID restrictions require wearing a mask at any station and always on board the train. Opening doors can be done in two ways. The top button you can hit with your hand, but if you're afraid of touching surfaces because of COVID, then kick the bottom button with your foot. I downloaded a free app called Speedometer that shows you both the position and how fast you're going. You can also use your map app to see where you are and follow the train along its route. Please like our video by checking the little thumbs up. That way you let us know you enjoyed it. Please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button, then the bell, and all. This will ensure that you get all of our new videos. We started our journey in Tampa, Florida, looking forward to the trip on Amtrak. Here's Rory getting excited. We're sitting in the Tampa station waiting for our train to arrive. The train arrives on time and we're ready for our trip to New York City. We can't wait. We're so excited. We have little to know that it's going to be a hell of a trip. The aisles are narrow so you can't stand, but you have plenty of room in the seats they recline much more than an airline seat, and there's two rests for your feet at the bottom. Outside Richmond, Virginia, we had our second big stop. 300 trees were down by the storm, and we had to wait for them to be cleared for 15, 16 hours. Rory was patient during the wait. Here we arrive in New York City, finally. Only 58 hours late, and on another day. This is the Amtrak Lounge. With, if you have a sleeper car, you can go in for free. They also send you free tickets occasionally. Now we're on our trip back to Tampa, which was uneventful and only about a half hour late. We enjoyed our trip to New York. We hope you have enjoyed our channel. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below and the bell next to it so you get notified of new videos when they come out.